what's going on everybody LK here back at it again with another video and today this is kind of a follow-up to my reactions video so um, probably the comment that came up the absolute most uh, about that video and predictably I don't want to say predictably but uh, it was talking about asking about I should say Goichi's defense so I wanted to make a video specifically about that because it's something I've talked about in this game in general already but uh, since it's, it recurs so much like let's just hop into it and the main thing is people and I think probably amongst like the like tournament players get it but maybe like not a casual audience understands how is it Goichi able to defend the way he does and I pretty much get how it's not easy, but I get how. Now, the misconception that people have is that he's reacting to everything, which is incorrect. That is incorrect. He's not reacting to everything. There's a few things you have to understand about Dragon Ball before we can actually talk about his defense. One, the game does not have good solo mix-up. So what I mean is, generally, not always, there are characters who do have the ability to do this, but characters attacking you on without assists have a lot of problems opening you up. Uh, if they do have something to open you up, it's either not that fast, or it's kind of risky to do without an assist, right? So, for example, uh, like we all know that like Goku can cross you up or do uh, a jump beam, right? He can do that. It's definitely risky for him to do that without an assist. So even though we know that Goku could do that, like as a mix-up, he needs an assist to do it, right? Um, or if Goku's back has your back to the corner, like he really doesn't have anything to just be like, hey, take this, right? That's issue number one that you have to understand. Issue number two that you have to understand is that Dragon Rush is not a great throw mechanic, for lack of a better word. It's not a very good throw mechanic. So why does this matter? So as discussed in a previous video about Dragon Rush, there's more than one way to tech Dragon Rush, right? But most ways of teching Dragon Rush, your throw tech window is small. So if we have Goku do it, I'll I'll show it. So you could tech with a button, you kind of could see the button come out, but this is what happens when I hit the button late. As opposed to if I tech with Dragon Rush, my window is a lot bigger. It's significantly bigger actually, if I tech with Dragon Rush. So here I'll do it really early as opposed to me doing a button where I'll just hit it, right? So this this is a this is a pretty important thing about the cube too, because since most characters don't have good solo mix up, you have to rely on Dragon Rush to if you want to hit people. And the and the game encourages you to use Dragon Rush because the return is high. The return is high. Sometimes the return is very high. Um, I'm going to turn on the info display because we do want frame advantage and enemy info. So the return is high. Not only do you get guaranteed damage, but if you don't have your assist, you get your assist back. Um, it's very good because you're leaving a gap, right? So you're getting your assist back. Another thing about the game is that for the most part, um, the how I describe as direct level 3s have almost all been nerfed except for GT Goku. Right. So what I mean by a direct level three is a level three that you can look at, right? So when when we have GT out here, right? So wow, <laughs> this is what happens when you play no sound. So you look at this. Everyone who plays the game looks at this and they go, "Oh, Goku is going to jump, and then he's going to do a high and low or like cross up." Like we all get it. But when uh, other characters do level three, like say like. Goku does a level 3, right? That's just J. Goku does a level 3. So, when people see this, they don't really think, oh god, a mix-up is coming. They're just like, ah, like, I might have to make some type of choice. But they're not like, oh my goodness, he's gonna jump at me and do highs and lows, right? And one final thing is that just overall in the game in general, they've kind of worked with, like, moves that lead to high-low mix-up easily and uh, assist to have a lot of blocks in, right? So, in the case of Bardock here, so, you still see people use, like, 
Bardock and into this low as like a high low, like up Lariat into like high low. You still kind of see people use that, but it's not like a good mix up. Like it's not like a true 50-50. You could do stuff to mess with people's guard timing, but it's not like a true 50-50 as it used to be. Uh, Gold tanks would be another example, like auto combo assist call, air dash jump heavy with low or air dash overhead would be an example of like that was a 50-50 like you could not defend it. So you put all these things together, you kind of get a clue on why Goichi's defense is so ridiculous. So it's a combination of things. One, take the Goku here, right? So if you step back and take the statement, the game doesn't have good solo mix-ups. Generally, it does not have good solo mix-ups. So in a case where like maybe a normal player would be uh, flustered by, let's say, this type of situation, right? Like, So a norm, your standard player might actually choose to guess in this situation and get hit by Goku, right? But Goichi is very content to just take this because there's no risk in taking that. There's no risk in taking that. The damn it's risky to try to jump and do do something about that right away. There's no risk in just sitting there and analyzing the situation, right? Because Rather than put himself in a risky spot, he would just sit there. As we all know, he would sit there and just take it for a while. Because there's no solo mix up. That's one. Two is the Dragon Rush. So he generally texts Dragon Rush with Dragon Rush. Now, it does take a lot of practice to tech Dragon Rush. It takes a lot of practice to the defend Dragon Rush. But he mitigates it by teching with generally with Dragon Rush because the window is bigger. So between, so if he's thinking this or this is not scary, like all these frame traps are not scary, I can sit here, then I can focus on looking for Dragon Rush, if that makes sense. Because again, generally you can, you can get through everything by blocking slash like getting hit by this alone is not so scary. That's, that's, does that make sense? Like, it's not that scary. Like, if he hits you alone, like, yes, you have plus frames, but, like, you don't get a combo, and just the pressure resumes. So generally, and I do this too. Like, for example, against Super Saiyan Goku, I just sit there. Why risk, especially if you haven't played the person before, right? Why risk swinging or doing something risky when you've never played the person before and you don't know how they like to attack? He sits there and he waits to see, like, what do you do? So in my case, my specific case, uh, this actually happened when we played Tournament Set, so I did this. So this is a 50-50 mix up, right? That's a 50-50 mix up. You can't defend that. I hit him. But there's no air tech string into Super Dash, right? So because he saw me do that before, his contextual awareness is good too. So because he saw me do that before, the next time I did block string Super Dash, even though you can't see the Super Dash point blank, he 2H'd me and killed my bar. So his contextual awareness, on top of him understanding that generally characters can't hit you alone, his contextual awareness is good too. So if he sees you do something multiple times, he will target it heavily at a later time while still defending well against other stuff. On top of that, his his uh, defensive technique is good, and it's beyond like it's beyond other people in that it's not that he's just good at doing it. So when I talk my when, when I say defensive technique, I'm talking about like OS guard, fuzzy jump, like that kind of stuff. It's not just that he's good at doing it, because like once you learn how to do it, like you could just do it. But it goes back to the contextual awareness sort of thing. Like he is willing to be like not freak out and just do it. Right, so take a string like this for example, and we'll use, uh, we'll use, um, I guess we could use Fuzzy Mash as an example here, I guess. Yeah, you can use Fuzzy Mash as an example. So, you can take this, and we can take this. Oops, my bad. So, a person who is not as good at using the defense technique might be constantly fuzzy mashing here to to success sometimes maybe not success other times like right i'll do it a couple more times so 
Like, I'm pretty successful here, but what if I do, what if I add this? Okay. Uh, that should be pretty good for time, right? No, I, that actually already got me. Okay. But it's, I'm doing it because I'm scared and uncertain. That's when you should actually use defensive techniques at a base level, is when you're uncertain. Because the whole point of it is that you cover multiple options, right? But the difference with Goichi is that he, one, recognized context, and two, makes solid choices of, in this context, I will only choose these things. Based on, like, risk and return. Until he gets a really solid idea of what you, specifically the person he's playing, likes to do. So, uh, and originally, he in this type of thing, he will sit. So I'll, I'll defend like he would, right? So he would sit, he would sit, he would sit. Sit, sit, look for Dragon Rush. Look for Dragon Rush, still looking for Dragon Rush. I'm a human, so I missed it. But uh, sit, you, you wait, you wait for the thing. And event, eventually, next time you see this, just pop out immediately. Pop out immediately, make the hard choice. Cause you've seen it, you've seen the opponent do this like, how many times have I had this recording play? Maybe like 10 times? So I've seen my opponent do this 10 times. So at some point, I gotta be like, I'm not just going to let you do it. Like, I know you do this, so here goes. Yeah, I think that's the most important thing uh, about this game is like, he is willing to basically not guess, assume that you, you, either you, you, literally the person watching this video, or your team does not have that strong mix-up, so he's willing to sit there. He can defend Dragon Rush with a high success rate. It's pretty hard to Dragon Rush him. Um, and once he gains info, he is willing to make uh, choices based off prior information. So because his defense is so hardy like that, and he's willing to just rely on context and gain the cues because he's not scared of taking mids and lows or whatever, he gets time to get info to make the actual hard defensive choices. If you do 50-50s to him, he's a human too, like he has to guess. There are examples, many, many examples of this in tournament play. But as far as the overarching thing, it's being willing to not, being willing to sit there patiently, get info, defend Dragon Rush, and then make contextual uh, choices based off the player he's playing. Okay. Hopefully that makes sense. Hopefully that makes sense. I do think it is quite skillful anyway. I'm definitely, this video is not about downplaying his defense. He definitely has like, like literally world champion level defense. Uh, I learned a lot by watching him defend and stuff. And I use a lot of these ideas myself now um, after watching him play because uh, I kind of was just like too, like how, how do you get through this? How do you stay not scared of things, etc. And this is the conclusion I came to after watching him and cross-referencing it with my own play. So okay, hopefully that makes sense. If you have questions in the comments, let me know. Uh, like and subscribe if you feel like it, and I'll see you next time. Peace out.